protect the trans students. Reversing President Obama's guidelines. Now this morning, Jackie Ivanko, the 16-year-old whose voice soared at President Trump's inauguration, calls for a meeting with the president to stand up for her transgender sister. Both speaking out right here on GMA. Fire and ice, those record highs from Colorado to Pennsylvania now heading to the northeast. Temperatures nearing 90 degrees down south, people laying on the beach in February and boating in Wisconsin. But now the heat making way for a dangerous storm as the upper Midwest braces for a big blizzard. Voice of a killer, chilling new audio of the man police say murdered those two teenagers in Indiana. One of the victims captured that voice in this picture of the main suspect, heroically hitting record on her phone in her last moments. Authorities now hope those clues will help catch the killer. In just one ticket, that massive $435 million jackpot, only one winner with those winning numbers somewhere in an American college town who won one of the biggest Powerballs ever. The search to find the luckiest person in America this morning. Your gift keeps on giving. Live in Times Square, this is GMA is with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And good morning, America. Happy Thursday. It is a good morning for one person in this country, at least one person. At least one person, not only, we're gonna take a live look at Lafayette, Indiana, but not only one person, but it was bought in a college town, George. Can you imagine being a college student who may have won over $400 million? Starting a little early in the week. I'll wow. tell you, I would be like Rodney Dangerfield and back to school. <laughs> <laughs> I was your friend then. <laughs> we'll have more on that in just a moment, but first, we want to get to those protests happening overnight over the White House's transgender rights decision. We will hear from the inauguration singer Jackie Ivanko and her transgender sister in just a moment. But first, ABC's senior White House correspondent, Cecilia Vega, has the very latest on all of that. Good morning, Cecilia. Amy, good morning to you. Donald Trump campaigned on being a friend of the gay community, but so many this morning saying that late night move from the White House here sets back protections for transgender people. Overnight, protesters taking their battle cry for transgender rights directly to the White House. Shame on Trump! Protect the trans students! Accusing the Trump administration of delivering a major blow. Trans equality now! In a late night decision, the White House reversed guidelines issued under President Obama. Public schools no longer required to allow transgender students to use the bathroom of their choice. The president's made it clear throughout the campaign that he's a firm believer in states' rights and that certain issues like this are not best dealt with at the federal level. Top Democrats calling the reversal just plain wrong and saying civil rights are not confusing. Why the dawn's early? Jackie Ivanko, who sang at President Trump's inauguration and whose sister is transgender, tweeting, you gave me the honor to sing at your inauguration. Please give me and my sis the honor to meet with you to talk transgender rights. The issue even pitting two key members of the president's cabinet against each other. Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos saying, we have a responsibility to protect every student in America. This is not merely a federal mandate, but a moral obligation. While Attorney General Jeff Sessions said the Department of Justice has a duty to enforce the law, adding it remains committed to its protections for all students, including LGBTQ students. Stuck in the middle, students like Gavin Grimm. Born female, his Virginia school district banned him from using the boys' bathroom. His case now headed to the Supreme Court. We will not be beaten down by this administration or any. Yeah, that big protest here overnight. Now, this order does include language requiring schools to protect transgender students from bullying. But, George, this is being viewed as a major setback for transgender rights. Thanks, Cecilia. Let's get more on this now from Jackie Ivanko and her transgender sister, Juliet. Thank you both for joining us this morning. And, and Jackie, let me begin uh, with you. We saw your tweet in Cecilia's piece. Have you heard back from the president? No. I have not heard back yet that I know of, but um, I'm hoping soon. <laughs> and, and, and if you get that meeting, what do you want to tell him? I, don't, I guess I just want to enlighten him on what my sister, I've seen her go through every single day in school and people just like her, what they deal with, the discrimination, it's terrible. And I guess I kind of just 
really want him to relook at that. And, and Juliet, what does the president need to know about what you go through every day? Basically, that uh, being at a high school where the policies on the bathroom are unclear, um, I, as Jackie has said, I kind of live it every day, um, going through discrimination. I've had things thrown at me. I've had people say pretty horrible things. Um, and the unsafe environment is just very unhealthy. So I feel like Donald Trump needs to know that being in such an unsafe environment won't do any good for not only the transgenders in the LGBT community, but as well as everyone as a whole. So did your life change when the guidelines came out from President Obama, Julia? Um, the, so far, l luckily, nothing's very much changed for me. Um, of course, when I heard about it, I was very disappointed, and I realized that we would need to take action in order to enlighten the administration on everything. But has your school overall been protective of you? Um, overall, yes. And, and Jackie, of course, you did sing at the inaugural. The president was a big fan. Would you sing again? Mm -hmm. Most definitely, because the reason why I did sing for the inauguration was not politics. It was for the honor and the privilege to perform for my country. Um, and that will stay the same, I think. Okay, let's hope you hear from the president. Thank you both very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Let's get more on this now from our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, right here as well. So what's the practical impact of what the president has done? Well, instead of viewing this as a civil rights issue, a fundamental question of discrimination, where the schools don't have any choice, it's now going to go back to them to be able to decide what they want to do. But keep in mind, there's already a nationwide temporary injunction in place, which effectively means this directive from President Obama isn't being executed right now anyway. So when it comes to what happens today, is there a difference today? No. Is there going to be a difference in the future? Yes. And, and eventually this whole issue of transgender bathroom rights is almost certain to be decided by the Supreme Court. Well, it's already in front of the Supreme Court. Um, there's a case, the Gavin Grimm case, which is supposed to be a big case. The problem is that the lower courts were deciding that case based on the President Obama directive. That became an important point. So if you don't have that directive anymore, and you don't have the administration defending it in that way, you've got a fundamentally different case. And so the question now is, is the Supreme Court going to say, wait a sec, if this is the administration's position on this now, we're going to send this back to the lower courts, and we're not even going to hear this case that we were supposed to decide so we'll next see month. How it all ripples yeah, well, but I think in the in the end, it will eventually end up there in some way, shape, or form to answer the fundamental question. Is this a Title IX violation? Is this a civil rights case? Because if you have different rulings coming from different circuits in the country, you're probably going to end up in the Supreme okay, Court. Okay, Dan Abrams, thanks very much. All right, and now to Republican lawmakers facing angry voters in town halls across the country, upset over President Trump's agenda, but the White House dismissing some of these people as professional protesters. ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, has more on all of that. Good morning, John. Good morning, Amy. Members of Congress are home for their first full week of recess since President Obama took office, and they are getting an earful from their constituents. Raucous crowds confronted Republicans across the nation, from Louisiana to New Jersey. And I'd like to know how you will uh, mobilize the other Republicans mm -hmm. to push back against this man when he makes delusional statements. Anger vented at Republicans in Congress and President Trump over health care and immigration. I could tell you three members of my family, including me, that would be dead, dead, and homeless if it was not for ACA. In Iowa, Senator Joni Ernst faced a similar scene, protesters following her to her car. And in Kentucky, the top Republican in the Senate was the target. The veterans are sick, the veterans are broken down, they're not getting what they need. If you can answer any of that, I'll sit down and shut up like Elizabeth Warren. Some act 
activists held their own town hall meetings, asking questions to cardboard cutouts and empty chairs. President Trump dismissed the scene as so-called angry crowds, planned out by liberal activists. Sad. The president referred to so-called angry crowds at these town halls. Is he suggesting this is manufactured anger, uh, that this is not real anger and real concern? Yeah, I, I think there, there's a hybrid there. Um, I think some people are clearly upset. But there is a bit of, of professional protester manufactured base in there. Just because they're loud doesn't necessarily mean that there are many. There's no question that liberal groups are encouraging these raucous town halls. MoveOn.org has dubbed this week Resistance Recess. They've published the lists of address and times and, and, and places uh, for these town hall meetings. But George, at several of these town halls, you see constituents holding up their driver's licenses to prove that yes, they are constituents. They are from the local area. Okay, John Carl, let's talk about this more now with our Chief Global Affairs anchor, Martha, Martha Raddatz. One of the big issues there at the town meeting is immigration. And of course, today you have the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Homeland Security down in Mexico ahead of protests there as well. It, that's going to be a very tough meeting, George. Mexico has already said they don't want to be pushed around by America. We can't stress enough how important this partnership is with Mexico, third biggest trading partner. And we've got Mexico saying, we don't want that wall built, and we're certainly not going to pay for that wall. So this is going to be a tough meeting. I think success could be defined by them just coming out and saying they'll try to work And together. they'll talk some more in the, in the future. Meanwhile, we talked yesterday about the fact that the president has asked for a battle plan against ISIS next week. Right now, major advance for the Iraqi troops backed by American forces there. Backed by American forces, they have apparently retaken the airport in Mosul. That is a huge deal. If you have the airport, you really have the advantage there. But we've got months ahead of us as they try to go into western Mosul, and we have now learned that there are more Americans involved closer to that battle line, and in fact, we have had some wounded. And we've had at least one general on the ground say he wants even more American troops closer. Yes. They're, they, what, what they do is they sort of gradually go towards the front line. It's called the, they're with the battalion now, about 700 Iraqi forces, and they can gradually get closer. They help call in air support. They feel it's very important to have Mer more Americans closer. Okay. Hey, Martha Raddatz, thanks very much. Michael? All right, thank you, George. We're going to turn now to those storm watches across the Midwest while millions enjoy record heat. And Ginger is outside Times Square to fill us in on that. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning to you, Michael. A mild Times Square this morning. Temperature already 44. We're going to tack on 20 degrees. An average high is 43. So we're already way past that. Madison, uh, Milwaukee, and Green Bay all hit all time February record highs yesterday. And look at this. The mild air is not done with us. We could see our first 100 of the season in the United States in Laredo, Texas today. So a lot of folks from south to north dealing with the mild, but don't worry, winter's coming back and it's coming with a lot of wind and certainly snow. Parts of Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, Minnesota have snow on the way and severe weather threat is big tomorrow afternoon for Indianapolis, Detroit and over to Cleveland. We'll have much more on that coming up in just a couple of moments. But Michael, we want to head back into you and Amy. All right. Thank you, Ginger. And I know everyone here has been talking, been waiting for the 60s. Oh, I've got my day totally planned <laughs> Absolutely. out. Just saying that. Yeah, exactly. All right. Now to that fiery showdown over the Dakota Access Pipeline, police arresting protests who refused to leave by last night's deadline, but opponents of the project say they are not giving up their fight. And ABC's Philip Mehta has the very latest. This morning, at least 10 pipeline protesters behind bars. Officers taking them down and arresting them Wednesday for refusing to leave this North Dakota campsite. We're being forced out of our home right now. Officials warn the area will soon flood and trash and debris left behind will become a hazard to nearby rivers. People need to leave for their own safety. And it's also about keeping pol pollution out of the river. Since last April, the land has been the epicenter of the fight against that 1,200 mile Dakota access pipeline that'll run oil from North Dakota to Illinois. Opponents say the pipeline will disturb sacred Native American sites and pollute the water supply. But the pipeline company says it's safer and cheaper than using trucks or trains. At its peak, the movement against the construction drew thousands of environmental activists, including celebrities like Susan Sarandon and Pharrell Williams. But this morning, less than 100 protesters defiantly remain. I'm not trying to get arrested. <laughs> And I'm not a criminal. The deadline to vacate the camp passed at 2 p.m. Wednesday. By then, some protesters had begun ceremonially torching parts of their own camp. One of those fires burning out of control, injuring a seven-year-old boy and a teenage girl. 
The next crucial moment in this standoff will come later this morning when officers will again attempt to clear the campsite. And police say they hope to make that happen without anyone else getting hurt. George. Let's hope so. Okay, Philip, thanks very much. We need the latest now in a stand your ground case from Florida where Curtis Reeves killed a man in a movie theater after an argument over a cell phone. Shooter's wife is now taking the stand to help him avoid a murder trial and ABC Steve Osinsami is tracking the case. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, George. Today, the judge in this case will visit the movie theater where the shooting happened. She will decide before trial whether the shooting was justified. The wife of 73 year old Curtis Reeves is defending her husband at this Florida court hearing to decide if he has a good enough excuse to avoid a murder trial. Vivian Reeves told the judge he fired his gun in self defense. You're looking at, at Mr. Olson at that point and you see him lunging forward. Is that correct? Yes, I saw that. And his whole upper body just came, just came forward. And I, I thought that he was coming over. Reeves is accused of killing 43-year-old Chad Olson during an argument at this Tampa area movie theater in 2014. He's hoping to use Florida's controversial stand your ground law to avoid prosecution. The two men are seen arguing in this blurry surveillance video from the dark theater. That's Reeves at the bottom right of the screen. The court has already heard from doctors who say that Reeves is an old man with arthritis who had good reason to fear a physical fight with a man who was six foot three but lawyers for the victim's family aren't buying it. I really think that this is a lot of smokescreen stuff. I think they're just trying to say that he was this gentle, frail old man. The entire argument was over a cell phone that Olson was using during the previews. His wife, who was sitting next to him in the theater, says he was using the phone to reach their babysitter. She told us he did stand up to argue with Reeves, but says Reeves stood up too. He was steps above us, the other guy. He was towering over us. How is that a threat? But in these police recordings, Reeves tells a different story. Scared the hell out of me. Okay. I thought the guy was fixing to beat the <laughs> Olson's wife will testify she was struck by a bullet in her hand during the shooting. A decision as to whether this case will move forward is expected to come sometime next week. George? It's such a tragedy they came to this. Okay, Steve, thanks very much. All right, everybody. Now to that big news about that $435 million Powerball jackpot. One lucky winner matched all six numbers, and a winning ticket was sold at a gas station in Lafayette, Indiana, which is the, it is the, it is the seventh largest jackpot in Powerball history. And if the winner chooses a lump sum payment, what do you think they get? Well, I can see it. <laughs> $250 million. Yes, you can see it. You spoiled it. You spoiled it. $250 million is not bad at all. And the odds of winning are 1 in 292 million. So if some student quickly changes their major to finance, maybe that'll be a clue, <laughs> it, it could right? be them. <laughs> they should I take some run class or if runs you are out of town. <laughs> or just drops out of school. Yeah, right. there's that too. All right, well, uh, we've got a lot to talk about weather-wise, Ginger. A big snowstorm headed to the Midwest. Yes, and I know what this guy would do with that money. He'd fix his house. Because look at this picture. A landslide brought snow, shoving it into the home. He's now shoveling it out of his house in Eden, Utah. But it is that storm that Amy was just mentioning. We're watching not only for the blizzard potential, but for some pretty hefty accumulations. Could be one of the biggest of the season because it's been a relative snow drought in parts of the Great Lakes and, of course, back into the Midwest. So you could see locally a foot or more. I wanted to quickly hit on this again because damaging wind and some supercells, some rotating thunderstorms could be possible tomorrow afternoon. Fort Wayne, you're in there. All right, let's get to this. Spring Lake City is brought to you by CarMax. When you buy a used car, you should feel confident. That's why CarMax has over 40,000 cars to choose from nationwide, with prices clearly marked the same online as they are in the stores. That should give you some car buying confidence, the type of confidence you need to wear white after Labor Day, the type of confidence to suddenly switch to an English accent for no reason whatsoever. Yep, at CarMax, it's all about confidence. Nothing but net. Nailed it. Or should I say, nailed it, governor. Certainly feeling like springtime today in the area. Take a look at these daytime highs. Mid-70s for some, 72 in the D.C. metro. Remember that average high sitting at 49 degrees. Next big changeup arriving this weekend. A cold front moving through on Saturday will produce some showers and some thunderstorms by the afternoon. Temperatures dropping in the mid-40s by Sunday. 55 for a high on Monday and that sunshine returns. Here's a look at your extended forecast. A few showers early week. Coming up, major new clues in the murder of Indiana teens. The image and voice captured by, by one of the victims on her cell phone.